Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. So I am going to go through my tips for you to help you improve on your paper four. Before I get started, please like, please click that subscribe button. It goes a long way for me to know exactly what kind of videos that you want. So if you like this video, then I'm more likely to do paper four videos or IB videos or any other video. So it's really, really helpful if you can press like, press subscribe. Okay, let's get started. So I'm gonna go through my four main tips for this kind of paper four, which is a two hour, 15 minute paper. It's 60% of your IGCSE Cambridge grade. So it's really important that you get this right. Let's go through this. So I'm gonna highlight a few questions that I think are very, very useful for you. So let's start with question two, which is a transformations question. And it doesn't come up every year, but it comes up most years. As you can see with this question, it's worth nine marks. We've got some basic rotation, reflection, etc. And this is one of my key points here with topics that you know is going to appear that conceptually not the most difficult topic either. You need to be maximizing your marks there. Likewise, with question three right here, this is a very typical percentage question. You need to work out percentage reduction, working backwards with re reverse percentage change, working out the percentage of something, you know, compound interest. All those skills are really, really useful for you and you know it's going to appear. So it's worth, if you just revise these two topics, which you know 90% of the time are going to appear, you've got six, nine, 11, 15, 17, 19 marks, which is a lot. Okay, so I just want to continue to another question, um, which I want to highlight, which is this one here, question nine. Now, if you've been watching my YouTube videos, I have actually gone through this paper, but this question nine highlights a very important point, which is the paper is not always linear. What do I mean by that? Well, with question B, you need to use answers from part A. Notice it's the same values, 20, 20, 40, 40, 15, 15. So they want you to use this idea, draw a essentially a triangle here, in order to actually calculate this waste paper bin, turn into a frustrum, so to speak. So the second key point here is to be aware that the paper is non-linear in nature. You need to watch out for that. Uh, my next point is question 11 here, which is a GDC skills question. It comes up every year. Now I can say that for certain, it comes up every year without exception, sometimes as two questions rather than one. With this, it's about knowing your GDC, knowing how it works, knowing how it functions. Now, if you're not sure about your TI Inspire calculator, I've done two tutorials. You can click the link which appears right now and that will help you with the basic functions and with actually graphing, which will help you with these specific questions here. So knowing your graphical display calculator, knowing how it works is going to be taken a long way to giving you those extra marks to get you from a C grade to a B grade or a B to an A or an A to an A star. You need to have those marks secure. Okay. And my last point is that, take question 12 as a good example here, that each question has a C grade part, a B grade part, an A, A star part. Now, sometimes the C grade part will be longer than the A grade part, but the key thing to watch out for in this particular paper is that you need to attempt the start of every question. Okay, the worst thing that you can do is just do half the paper thinking the other half is too difficult, but that's not the case with this paper. The start of each question is your C grade element. So you need to make sure you have enough time to attempt the start of each question. Then you can, again, you can maximize your marks. Functions, for example, we've got some simple substituting and then simple substituting into a function. Then we've got to find an inverse and then algebraic fractions at the end. So you can see those first two marks you need to be getting. You need to make sure you've got those marks in the bag. So I'm just going to summarize the points I've just made. Okay, and now to summarize. So my hints and tips for this paper four are the following. Each individual question, as I just mentioned, has a C grade part, B grade part, A, A star part, different to say an IGCC Ed Excel paper. So keep that in mind as you work through the paper. 
some questions are non-linear, so you have to go back occasionally, similar to paper six in some ways, and then use answers you've already worked out, and then use that in a future calculation. GDC skills, those graphical display calculator skills are a must. There is a specific GDC question in every paper, and I bold that because it's such an important part of the paper that often pupils do incorrectly because they haven't had that practice. Make sure you practice how to use your GDC. And if you don't know, then talk to your teachers, watch my videos, be proactive in finding that out. And lastly, I've said this right at the beginning, focus on maximizing those marks in which come up often, percentages, transformations, functions, and then maximize those marks in those topics. So you can feel confident when you come out of the paper four that you have actually got those marks in the bag. Yeah, You've got that security of those marks. So make sure you keep that in mind. Okay, hope you enjoyed that video. I made a paper six uh, hints and tips and that seemed to be very popular. So I want to do the same for paper four. So please like and please subscribe. That tells me that you like this content and I'll do more of it. Okay, it's also my birthday today when I'm filming this. So feel free to put a happy birthday in the comments as well. All right, bye bye for now.